heatingandcooling.com. Get 20% off your first service and ask about their service contracts. The original Arlington Heights Heating and Cooling, not the biggest, just the best. Get the best sleep of your life. Helix makes personalized mattresses to fit your unique body type and sleep preferences. Go to helixsleep.com and get up to $200 off during their holiday sale. 637 Team Hochberg Traffic Center Time and Jim Telemonte. We have a couple of crashes to report this morning at busy suburban intersections in Downers Grove. There's a collision at Butterfield and Highland just north of the Reagan Tollway. In Bensonville, there's a crash York Road at Irving Park. On the Kennedy right now, it's 20 minutes, so hair to downtown, outbound the same. About Eisenhower. Traffic's building just a bit approaching Des Plaines Avenue. 29 minutes, 390 to downtown. Outbound, it's 28. Inbound Stevenson at County Line. There's a spin out with a car in the ditch coming off a ramp from County Line. Inbound Ryan delays begin at 31st. 20 minutes, 95 to downtown. Northbound Lakeshore Drive, the exit to 18th Drive is blocked with a crash. That's traffic. I'm Jim Palamonte. On AM 560, the answer. Jim, thank you. Chicago's morning answer continues next. Partly sunny in your forecast. There's a chance of an afternoon shower or thunderstorm and a better chance of showers and storms throughout the evening. We'll hit the low 90s this afternoon and upper 60s overnight. 78 right now, next news at 7. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Listen to AM560, The Answer, online at 560theanswer.com, on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, on TuneIn, iHeart, and Radio.com. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560. Morning, Dan and Amy, uh, Wisconsin Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes commenting yesterday on uh, what should and should not be investigated uh, between uh, the Jacob Lake police-involved shooting and uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse case, uh, the shooting and killing of two uh, rioters, injuring of another. But as the governor said, uh, DCI's investigation is ongoing, but we don't need an investigation to know that Blake's shooting falls in a long and painful pattern of violence. And this is a pattern of violence that happens uh, against black lives too often across this country. And as you all know, we saw even more gun violence unfold on Tuesday night when two protesters were tragically killed and one other injured by gunshots. Someone that wasn't looking to keep peace, an outside agitator, someone who came in from Illinois with a long rifle, was able to just walk the streets freely like that's something normal that we should just come to expect. Let me tell you, that's not anything normal. We shouldn't come to expect it. We shouldn't accept it. Because what do you think is going to happen if you have an agitated man with a long gun walking down the streets thinking that he's some sort of peacekeeper? And that kind of behavior shouldn't be enabled either. And we have to deal with the devastating results of that. Uh, We saw that happen in Louisville already. We saw it happen in Charlottesville. Somebody ran their vehicle into protesters and Heather Heyer was killed. Now, Kenosha, Wisconsin is also home to that sort of tragic scene. We have to not ever want to see that happen again. Hey, Lieutenant Governor Barnes, um, what about in Seattle where uh, two people were murdered inside the Chaz Chop Autonomous Zone? A father of a 19-year-old who was murdered just filed a $3 billion lawsuit against the city. What about the the violence there? What about... uh, Violence against police officers, including committed by Jacob Blake, resisting arrest prior to him being shot. Is that something that's relevant? The number of times that Jacob Blake had to comply with police officers before it escalated to the shooting? Well, that's why the politicians, I think, should use this platform while they have the national media attention to hit that home again. Say, hey, look, if you get pulled over by police, l- listen to their commands. Don't resist arrest. And while we're manufacturing, we're manufacturing characterizations of Kyle Rittenhouse. What about the actual records of not only the rioters who were killed, a convicted sex offender who was, uh, according to New York Times reporting, charging Rittenhouse, a, a um, uh, somebody who was convicted of unlawful use of a weapon, and in inti- public intoxication who was shot and wounded, uh, the other individual also 
the other individual killed, the other rioter killed also a criminal record. Uh, do, should we talk about Jacob Blake's criminal record and what he was doing at uh, his ex-girlfriend's house in the first place? I mean, all Where of those, allegedly the sexual assault had taken place in May. If you if you want to provide context uh, in the conversation, fine. Let's do it across the board and let's separate what we actually know versus what the left is hoping is true. Hoping something is true versus what you actually know are two different things. Um, what's the evidentiary standard for making det- determinations about prosecutions? About judgment calls? And it seems those are the questions that uh, Governor Evers and Lieutenant Governor Barnes and uh, federal politicians from Ayanna Presley to Kamala Harris to Joe Biden don't want to comment on. Isn't that interesting? For more on the topic of what's happening in Kenosha and uh, the larger issue of law and order, pleased to be joined by Brian Stile. He's a congressman for Wisconsin's first congressional district, which includes Kenosha. Brian, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on this morning. So um, what about uh, what uh, Lieutenant Governor Barnes has said and what uh, the combination of Evers and Barnes has uh, said and done since uh, this uh, police-involved shooting? You know, a- any loss of life is is tragic. But what's key here is that we allow a proper investigation of the facts and then allow the facts to lead us to justice. What we don't want to do is leap immediately into conclusion. That's what causes a lot of the problems. From the very first incident that occurred on Sunday where we saw Jacob Blake get shot, an incredibly difficult video to watch, I called for us to have a full and complete investigation. Do that quickly. It's an independent investigation. It's completed in the state of Wisconsin. It's completed by the Wisconsin Department of Justice. Let's get all the facts on the table and then follow the facts to get us to justice. The same in this case. I spent the day the other day in Kenosha, and let me tell you, when you see the tragic situation, when you talk to families who are scared, who are nervous, who've seen their livelihoods burned down, it is incredibly emotional what has occurred in the city of Kenosha. And I continue to call that we need to have public safety restored in Kenosha immediately. We had another relatively peaceful night last night. But again, that was after we finally got a sufficient amount of resources into the city of Kenosha. And you're getting more of this. Uh, is it true that you're getting National Guardsmen from Arizona, Alabama and Michigan? And if so, what are they going to be doing? They're going to be that is that is accurate. They're going to be there to support local law enforcement. So if we go back to Tuesday, right, so Tuesday mm-hmm. night was the, the incident where we had an additional loss of life. Starting on Tuesday morning, very early, I was on the phone with local law enforcement in Kenosha And it was clear that they did not have sufficient resources to address what was unfolding in the city of Kenosha. It's when I reached out to the president of the United States, I called the president, he answered my phone call, and I said, Mr. President, we need to get additional resources into Kenosha. He said, Brian, I'll do it. He called the governor, and the governor's office in the state of Wisconsin denied the offer of assistance from the president to provide additional resources on Tuesday. On Tuesday night, things went from bad to worse. It was only by Wednesday that our governor accepted the offer from the president of the United States for additional resources. Then we had the beginning of more peaceful evenings in Kenosha. So the fact that our our governor and our lieutenant governor out there talking about what played out on Tuesday, a tragic incident, not to be lost on the, the tragedy of what's occurring in our city in so many respects, but the fact that they made a decision to reject the president of the United States offer for additional resources is something that I think they need to further explain. Uh, yeah, because then you had vigilantes come out and start protecting people's property. You have a whole series of bad things that start to, to play out. And everyone that was out after 8 p.m. was in violation of a curfew. The reason that local law enforcement were unable to, well, from my conversations, were unable to enforce the curfew, to enforce the rule of law, to provide public safety was because they did not have sufficient resources. It was a, an offer that was rejected on Tuesday. We had additional tragedy Tuesday night. By Wednesday, that offer is accepted, and we start to see incidents where local law enforcement teaming up with the U.S. Marshals arrested car loads, van loads, bus loads of individuals, many of whom came from out of state, to come to Wisconsin, and in some of those cars, they found incendiary devices, meaning jugs of gasoline that were filled up at local gas stations. 
They found gas masks. They found other illegal uh, items that were going to be used to incite a riot. That's the kind of federal assistance we needed. We got it. We kept those people from even getting into Kenosha in the first place. Then we began to restore public safety. And I am committed to making sure that we restore public safety to our community of Kenosha immediately and that we maintain it now that we've had two more relatively peaceful evenings in a row. Uh, that timeline is uh, very useful. That's good to know. Um, to, it's good to understand. In addition to that, I wanted to get your reaction uh moving beyond Evers and Barnes to uh, the prosecution side of the criminal justice system. And by contrast, at least from what I've heard, contrasting with Evers and Barnes, what I've heard from the Wisconsin Attorney General, what I've heard from the Kenosha County uh, State's Attorney, that's much. that's been much more encouraging. They've exercised the kind of restraint and presented sort of the approach that we're going to take to investigating and determining uh, what is and isn't supported by the evidence, both have seemed to me uh, struck the right tones with respect to enforcement of the law. I think most people realize that we, anytime you have a tragedy uh, that occurs and plays out in particular includes the loss of life, you need to have a thoughtful, thorough, independent, fair investigation to get all the facts, not some of the facts, all the facts. Then you need to allow the facts to determine how we carry out justice, and justice needs to be completed. But to lead to conclusions, to make comments that only incite anger and violence is dangerous, it's wrong. And in particular, our top four law enforcement uh, agencies in the state of Wisconsin put out a joint statement yesterday really going and commenting and saying what is being said by our governor and lieutenant governor, cherry-picking some of the facts, pushing forward some of the anger is both wrong, but in particular can be dangerous uh, to personal safety of the folks that are living in Kenosha uh, and as well as uh, our law enforcement officers who are there and sworn to protect the public safety in Kenosha. And that is a difficult job right now. So, so do you have confidence then in the Kenosha County district attorney, that state's attorney there and, and what he has said and, and the approach that he's taking? Uh, every all the information I have is to what the Kenosha district attorney is doing is moving things along appropriately. I don't have any evidence that there's a problem there at okay, all. Good. I think what we're looking at is some challenging comments uh, that are occurring by our governor, by our lieutenant governor. And I do push that our attorney general continues and completes these investigations as quickly as possible so we can see all the facts, not some of the facts, all the facts. And what do you say? I mean, the, the protesters, rioters, they said they're not going to leave Kenosha until this officer is charged. Well, Are you ready to live seen, life like that? Because that's, uh, I mean, no way to live, really. No, it's, it's, it's no way to live. This is where I think it's important to complete the investigation as quickly as possible. I think when we have all the facts on the table, cooler heads will begin to prevail. Uh, until that time, is there are people that want to do criminal activity in Kenosha. I'm committed to making sure that the local law enforcement has all the resources they need to be able to protect Kenosha and to maintain public safety in our city. Uh, give a, Just talking a, a second about uh, electoral politics, since it is the season, uh, with the conclusion of the Republican National Convention last night, President Trump's acceptance speech, your reviews of the convention, what you found to be some of the, the highlights, your, your overall impressions. I'll admit I probably saw a little bit less of the full convention than I wanted to. I've been like 24-7 on the phone with folks in Kenosha trying to get assistance. But I think this Republican message of keeping America safe, of keeping America healthy, and ultimately getting us back to work, who better to rebuild the United States economy than President Trump and Republicans and pro-growth ideas than us who have done it before? We got punched in the face by coronavirus. And now this is going to be about getting us back to work, rebuilding our economy and putting forward the policies and explaining how some of the tax reform, how cutting regulation really unleashed the entrepreneurial spirit in America and got us one of the best economies we had seen in a long time, one of the lowest unemployment rates we had seen in a long time. And that through those policies, we've done it once, we're going to be able to do it again. And going on the offense, not on the defense, but even on the offense and explaining how conservative Republican policies move our country forward, how we can create a more perfect union. And I heard that time and again, and that's juxtaposed against where the far left 
wants to take us. I sit on committee. I sit uh, with Maxine Waters and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on a regular basis. I see where the left wants to take our country, and I know where we need to take our country. And I think that was laid out pretty clearly uh, during the convention. He is Brian Stile, representative for Wisconsin's first first congressional district, which represents Kenosha, as we were just, uh, which includes Kenosha, as we were discussing. Brian Stile, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Connect with Dan and Amy using the AM560 mobile app.